I don't believe in life you can make yourself an icon, right? You have to be kind of anointed an icon. I think because he was a combination designer and design director, he became a brand name in his own. The Nelson Bench, The Nelson Bed, Nelson Lights. He thought of himself just as much as a teacher or as a writer as he thought of himself as a designer. I think in this way, Nelson was well ahead of his time, that he was not only active in so many disciplines, but he was successful across so many disciplines. Nelson studied architecture at Yale University. An architectural training provided him with the ability to figure out a means for looking at problems and providing solutions. Architecture is a very solution-oriented profession. Architects are taught to look for the real problem that's being solved. And I think what Nelson brought to Herman Miller was to look at the architectural problem of furniture. What are the things that people are looking for in their homes at the time? Up until the 1930s, Herman Miller was creating reproduction Victorian antiques. Gilbert Rohde, who preceded Nelson as the first design director, got Herman Miller on the path of producing modern furniture, and Nelson largely picked up from where Rohde left off. At a time when American modernism was exploding and being born, Herman Miller and George Nelson changed the tastes of Americans towards furniture. You know, we all think of Milan, of New York City of LA as being these design centers, these capitals of architecture in the future. Uh, this is a Zealand, Michigan-based company that changed the world. The terminology is always difficult. Is it a reissue? Is it bringing it back? Is it an authentic licensed product? I don't like any of those terms. It's the George Nelson bed by Herman Miller, as it always was. I think we're all in this disposable world looking for things that aren't. He never would have believed that the furniture they were launching then would be just as viable, if not more viable, 60 years away. I think what the Thin Edge Bed Collection does is something that Nelson did often, which was to create a solution that is only what's necessary. In some ways, not a molecule more than what you need to solve the problem. Its language is so quiet that it doesn't need to be the protagonist in any room that it's living in. And I think this notion of timeless design is often connected to those objects that don't insist on being a protagonist, but are quiet supporters of our everyday. Creating a, a useful design is a rarity, especially one that persists for decades, but even rarer than that are useful thoughts that persist for even longer, and I think that was what George Nelson was able to give us. Our time is still very much influenced by the birth of modernism. Nelson, as one of the key figures in shaping it, is still important to us today. I don't imagine that the principles of modernism will disappear in our lifetime. I'd be careful around saying George was a modernist because I think his thinking was he was always reevaluating where he stood and what he stood for. And I think he was always wary of dogma and of constraints of labeling. Now those new product launches might be excellent day one, might be horrible day one, they might last for two or three years. This is what we know is timeless. There aren't that many designs of anything that are timeless. You can't plan that. It has to be really good, because no one can see the future. <laughs>